Okay, this lecture is over Module 9 of the curriculum, uh, titled FHRP Concepts. Uh, FHRP stands for First Hop Redundancy uh, Protocol. Um, so what are we going to learn about in this module? So they're, they're saying in the beginning here, okay, you, you know all about spanning tree and you've eliminated the loops at layer two, which is the primary issue at layer two. So now we're moving up to level three, talking about routers and the default gateway. And what they're mentioning here is if your default gateway goes away, uh, based on what we've discussed up to this point, uh, you cannot communicate outside your uh, local uh, network uh, because the default gateway for whatever reason is not functioning um, and you have to wait till that comes back up for the network to uh, function correctly. So the way they solved this was with something called first hop redundancy um, protocols and that is what this module uh, talks about. So what specifically will you learn? You'll learn about uh, what um, and how first hop redundancy protocols work. And then we'll um, look at one called hot standby router protocol, uh, which is another way um, to solve this, or it is one of those uh, first hop redundancy protocols. Um, so um, we talked about the default gateway limitations. Uh, if a device is the default gateway and stops functioning, as I said, the devices using that de default gateway are isolated. So we need a mechanism to provide an alternate or alternate um, gateways um, so that the devices in our network can continue functioning. So that's what is meant by first hop redundancy protocol. The first hop off the network is your default gateway. So um, what we have now is in devices that are only able to have one default gateway. Now I'll, I'll talk a little bit like an analogy for DNS. Uh, since DNS is so important, um, you can put at least two, typically two, DNS servers. So if one of your DNS servers is not functioning, then the other, uh, it can talk to the other. DNS server, but there's no mechanism really built into the configuration of devices to support more, more than one uh, default gateway. So down here, what they're showing us is a picture of this. We have lots of redundancies in these crosslinks. So if any device goes down, we should still have um, layer two um, connectivity between many routes. But the problem is um, PC1 can only have one default gateway and it is set to be router 1. So if router 1 quits functioning, uh, it does have another path through router 2, but it doesn't know about it because its default gateway is um, router 1. So that kind of demonstrates uh, the issue that, that we can have. So. One solution to this is to uh, come up with the concept of a virtual router. Um, and what happens is this virtual router, um, if PC2 is set to talk to it, uh, by default it's configured to forward to this forwarding router and then go out to the internet. But we have a standby router and if something happens, uh, what happens is, let's say this link went down, uh, we still talk to our virtual router, but the virtual router knows to forward through this router over here on the right. Um, so we can have a mechanism that's going to change our route uh, to get off the local network out to the internet, uh, capital I. So uh, 914 talks about different options uh, that we have. So we have hot standby router protocol, which is what HSRP uh, stands for. It is Cisco proprietary 
and it allows for transparent failover like we uh, just discussed. There is also when IP version 6 came about, Cisco created HSRP for IP uh, version 6 uh, to, to um, deal with this. We also have virtual router uh, redundancy protocol version 2. And this is a non-proprietary protocol that dynamically assigns the responsibility for one or more virtual routers uh, to function in an IP version 4 uh, network. Um, they came out with VRRP, uh, Virtual Router Redundancy uh, Protocol version 3. Um, it will support both IP version 4 and IP uh, version 6. And the other thing is it's non-proprietary, so it will work uh, just fine in multi-vendor environments. Uh, we can have gateway load balancing. Uh, basically what happens is we have redundant routers that are configured the same, and um, they can uh, distribute the load between um, these different routers and if one of them fails they just pull that out of the the load balancing and continue to load balance amongst um, the remaining routers we have a, another um, cisco proprietary first hop redundancy protocol called glbp uh, basically what it does is it provides an automatic router backup uh, for ip version 6 host um, that are configured with a single default gateway. Uh, so we have multiple first hop routers um, that we can use, uh, but it still shares that out as a virtual uh, router. And then um, ICMP router discovery. Uh, this is a legacy uh, solution. It was only for IP version four and is no longer um, supported uh, because it's legacy. 915 is a check your understanding on the first hop redundancy protocol uh, concepts that we just talked about. Um, you can do that on your own and we'll move on to uh, the hot spare um, router or I'm sorry hot standby um, standby spare kind of same thing but it's hot standby router uh, protocol and again this is a way to provide a first hop um, routing redundancy uh, so that we don't get isolated uh, from the the network um, so first thing we need to talk about is the hsrp um, priority and then talk about preemption so basically this has what's referred to as an election process uh, we've kind of talked about um, other protocols that have the selection process um, or calculation algorithm like spanning tree. Um, and what happens is the router with the highest numeric IP version 4 address is elected or declared the active router. Um, this is by default uh, because the default um, we have a priority on routers, and by default, they all default to 100. Um, if you go in and configure the priority, which can be a numeric value uh, between 0 and 255, so it's an 8-bit number, uh, the router with the highest priority is going to be elected. However, if the priorities are all equal, for example, all set to the default, then it is going to be the highest IP version uh, for address. Um, the, this priority, there's a standby space priority iOS command. So if you want to go in and manually set the priorities to have a little bit more control on who is or who becomes um, the active router, you can do that. Um, once something is the active router, it is going to stay the active router until a router appears on the network that has a higher priority or equal priority and higher IP version 4 address. Or you can go in and force this to happen by saying standby preempt. 
and it will remove that. So what we have here in the graphic is we have router 1 being the active router because it has a higher priority than uh, router 2. If um, router 1 were to fail, uh, then router 2 would become the active router and start routing our traffic. 8.2 talks about the different um, HSRP states and timers um, that we might have. So basically, whoever the active router is is responsible for forwarding traffic for the network set uh, segment. Um, we can have a passive router that's on standby. Um, it's keeping track of the the configure the configuration and then when it needs to assume the role the router fails over and becomes the active router. Um, so the different states are uh, the initial state um, you can enter um, through a configuration change and it's when it is in the process of becoming available. It then learns um, so it has to determine the virtual IP address and has not yet uh, seen a hello uh, message from the actual active router. So it is sitting there learning or in reality uh, waiting uh, to hear from the active router via that hello message. Uh, then once it gets that it goes into a listening state. The router knows the virtual IP address that is being used but the router is not active and it is not um, standby. So it's just listening from hello messages from other routers. Uh, as far as speaking, it will um, periodically send its own hello message and will participate in the election process uh, of an active and or standby router. And then standby um, is when the router is a candidate to become the next active router. And in that situation, it's going to send um, periodic um, hello messages. 924 is a check your understanding on HSRP. So you can do that on your own. And I don't know for sure, but this may be the shortest chapter. Um, in the Cisco 2 curriculum because we're already up to uh, the third section which is actually the module practice and quiz. A um, little bit of, well, no that, that's not right. Um, yeah I guess it's a little bit of inconsistency because if we were going to have any labs or packet tracers those usually come first and then we do what did I learn uh, but in this case, they started out with what did I learn in this module. So they'll talk about uh, first hop redundancy protocols and um, HSRP. Uh, so you can read through that um, short chapter, short, what did I learn. Uh, then you have the module quiz, which is usually the last thing in a module. But if we keep scrolling down here after the module quiz, we actually have a packet tracer. So like I said, uh, a little bit of an annoyance that you know whoever wrote this module didn't keep it consistent with all the other modules we've had so far. So, far. so this is a packet tracer activity on HSRP. Um, so um, I will be assigning this. Uh, so watch for it to uh, appear in Blackboard. And that finishes up Module 9.